They're not as big, they're not as fast, but they are noisier and we love them. Unlimited lights, Heat 1A. Here are the folks. The lineup brought to you by Muckleshoot Casino. It's the warningpower.com boat driven by Will Muncie. Travelzone.com with Chris Grant at the controls. The U.S. Army Auto Parts, Joe Souza. Paul Becker will be behind the wheel of the Miss Critical Logic. And the Interstate Batteries boat, Ryan Mallow. Those are the unlimited lights of Heat 1A. Unlimited Lights Heat 1A is presented for Seafair by Graham Trucking, the intermodal container solution. And here come the boats approaching the I-90 floating bridge on a beautiful day inside of 30 seconds. And we turn it over to the voice of hydroplane racing, Mike Fitzsimmons. Thank you very much, Steve. And on the inside lane, it's going to be Paul Becker and the Miss Critical Logic. On the outside, it's going to be Ryan Mallow. He has the supercharged boat, must remain on the outside for one full lap before he can come over. Naturally aspirated boats stay to the inside, the, the supercharged boats to the outside, but they of course make more speed. Here they come to the line. Looks like we're going to get a legal start there. They're all going to be right on time. And it is Ryan Mallow who pulls from the outside lane, but he's got a great big course to drive at least for one lap. And on the inside, Paul Becker in the critical logic has the better track. And Chip Van Hours, they go through that corner. Becker has advantage. Becker has the advantage with a short way around the course, but as you said, Ryan Mallow in the yellow boat right there on the outside, he's got a lot more horsepower to use up that extra real estate he's got to cover. He certainly does. This is, uh, of course, a supercharged boat with the yellow one on the outside and a uh, normally aspirated boat on the inside. And Mallow is really pulling away, and once he crosses the start and finish line at the end of lap number one, Pat, that's when he's able to move over. Oh my goodness, look at the excess of, uh, of horsepower he has there, powering out of that turn. But I have to say, he's using more space than he needs to. I mean, he's way out. He's got to stay outside for one lap, and boy, he's way outside. If you look at all this distance here, he doesn't have to be that far out. Okay, and as you watch Chip, now that he has overlap on the boat behind him, he may now come across right down into lane number two, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's closing the door now. He legally can do that because uh, once he's drunk, one full lap, he can then start to move around. If he's got a rooster tail, he takes the inside lane, and he's pulling away with the lead quite easily. Paul Becker in second place in the critical logic boat. Third place, that's Will Muncy in that smarter, uh, in that smaller race boat. His big boat got uh, damaged, and so he's driving this one for the first time today. Uh, all the way he has driven it many times in the, this particular class. It is smaller than the other boats. Joe Souza in fourth, and uh, bringing up the rear at the moment, that would be uh, Chris Grant. Mike, we should explain what a supercharged engine is in the yellow boat that you're seeing there on the screen versus what we call a normally aspirated boat. The big difference is a supercharged boat forces the air into the engine. It actually drives the air into the engine, where in a normally aspirated boat, it just gets as much air as it can suck through. So that rammed air really gives it a lot of horsepower. He's making some pretty good speed at 106 miles an hour for that first lap for Ryan Mallow, and he's got this thing under command, the superior horsepower, obviously, the reason. But Mallow also is in a very tight battle uh, in the uh, national high points. Uh, he's uh, Nobody's going to catch Kaylee Perkins out of this particular uh, race, but he is in a good battle for second and third. Ladies and gentlemen, one thing to note is we celebrate 60 years of Seafair. These little guys are going faster than the big guys went back at the beginning of Seafair. Although their course is a little bit smaller, but yes, they are. They're making some awfully good horsepower with these boats. Okay, little traffic up there in the north turn now. Ryan is negotiating that just fine in the UL-19 interstate batteries. Gets out from, uh, from under all the wakes, and uh, he's going to go on past uh, Will Muncie in that particular position now as he... Uh, comes across to lap number two, or lap number three rather, and get the checkered flag. So it's Ryan Mallow who's got the victory, and that's an important step up in points for him. I think what we're seeing here is even though you give that supercharged boat the disadvantage of having to be on the outside and go the further distance, it just, it's too much. That horsepower just overwhelms everything. I'd like to see the lights go to a one engine so everybody's got the same horsepower. Well, they do it for parity purposes, obviously. There are a couple of drivers. I mean, Kaylee Perkins has a normally aspirated boat, and uh, she's been able to hold them off so far four times in a row. Yeah, her boat's running unbelievably well. That team is so well-oiled, and she's got a lot of experience now. Nobody's touched her this year. 
So Ryan Mallow gets uh, first victory here in the unlimited lights. And that's an important step toward the final heat for him. And he needs to serve notice to uh, Kaylee and others that uh, he's here to stay with a couple more races to go on the circuit past Seattle. This is very important that he perform well here. I'm sure he's quite satisfied. Mike, and we should talk about the lanes, the difference between the lights and the unlimited. The lights are going to fight for lanes all day long. Is that right? Yeah, until a minute 45 before the start. Then they have to come past the start-finish line, and by that time, that's their score up. And uh, and that's the end of it. Then they must hold those lanes. And of course, the, the normally aspirated boats can fight for the lanes on the inside, but the supercharged boats, they can only fight for outside lanes. And so Five Star Racing notches a win here in Heat 1A for the Unlimited Lights. That's Ryan Mallow climbing out. Let's head down to the pits and find out just what kind of race it was. Here's Jenny. Thanks, Steve. Well, Ryan's here with a big smile, Ryan. Yeah, 400 points definitely gets us on board. Uh, it's a good way to start the weekend right now. I had Paul on my inside. He's real fast, so uh, I don't know what happened to him, but um, just happy to be here. Thanks for Interstate Batteries and uh, looking forward to a really good weekend. And I heard you guys were trying to just show a message to those other unlimited lights out there. You think you showed them? Um, you know, I think there was a lot left in the boat, that's for sure. But we just, like I said, we just wanted to get on the board, get some points, and, uh, you know, start getting ready for tomorrow, I guess. Well, good luck with that. Back to you, Steve. All right, Jenny, and here are your results again. That was one of the heats that was taped yesterday in early racing. Unlimited lights, heat 1A. Interstate batteries on top. Warning power second. The U.S. Army Napa Auto Parts third. SuperTravelZone.com, and then the Miss Critical Logic did not finish the race. The results of Heat 1A. When we come back, 1B coming your way. Don't go away.